The brand new Inov K5 is a 4K resolution dual motorcycle camera system, marketed as a major step up from its predecessor, the K2. It features a fully waterproof to IP67 4K front camera, which also houses the inbuilt DVR module, a 1080 rear camera, which is also fully waterproof to IP67, upgraded industry-leading 5Hz GPS receiver, a remote to let you monitor and control the system whilst riding the bike, upgraded dual-band onboard Wi-Fi, and an external microphone. But is it any good? Down in the And here it is. The Inov K5 comes stylishly presented in a foam lined box with everything you need for installation. The front 4K camera now incorporates the DVR module leading to a somewhat bulky size. The rear camera is still 1080 resolution. There's now a remote, upgraded GPS, all mounts and fixings, the DC converter to power the system, some info on suitable SD cards to handle the upgraded 4K, comprehensive destructions including wiring setup, possible mounting options and a rundown of the app. So the cameras themselves, starting with the new 4K front camera. It's quite a chunky beast as it integrates the DVR module into the camera itself due to the cable limitations of 4K data transfer. It's got an inbuilt thread for mounting and watertight housing for the SD card, accessible by removing these tiny screws which are very easily lost. All the various components connect via their respective cables to the front camera, meaning mounting locations are somewhat limited. The rear camera is very similar to the previous K2 model, has a max resolution of 1080 at 30 frames per second, but has improved low light performance and near infrared sensitivity. The GPS has been improved to now include 5 Hz high speed GPS, meaning the signal is stronger and refreshes faster. It's got a remote which you can mount in a variety of locations, meaning you can easily see if the system is operating correctly, as well as manually save files or take some pics. The sound on the previous K2 model was very basic, so we now have an external mic which you can mount anywhere you like. As well as mounting somewhere on your bike to get optimal engine noise, you can even put it inside your lid and do your best TMF impression. I'll be giving that a go shortly. The DC converter has been further improved to 5th generation status. Inov have listened to feedback and now incorporate terminal heads to the positive and negative cables that connect to your battery, and the triggered live cable now comes ready stripped, meaning installation really is a cinch. The K5 comes with all mounts, nuts, bolts, bits and bobs needed to get it fitted, and there's a full installation vid coming next, if it's not yet available up in the top right callout. So let's see what it's actually like on the bike. Now I've just come out into my garage ready to go out on the bike. Now see look, the screws just fall out. If you're gonna do this in off, could you could you make it so that at least these screws stay in there? Because now they're loose. I'll lose them. Okay, so what is this like? On the old one it was a nightmare getting the SD card out. This looks actually Yeah, so even with my fat little fingers and no nails, I can pull the SD card out no problem. That's a lot better than the previous one. So that was a 256 gig Sandist Extreme Pro card, that one. And I'm now putting in a Sandist Extreme 512 gig card. Now, there are some conditions on your SD card because this is now 4K. So read the instructions, they're quite detailed on, on any of and these are the ones it recommends. So that's what I'm going to pop in. Amazing, that's 512 meg. Incredible, isn't it? Whack that in, that's it in there. Now we've got the, these daft wee screws back in. I'm definitely going to lose these screws. What I will check once we've been out on the bike is I'll check what sort of speed you can download on the app. So bear in mind, wherever you mount this camera, now obviously I've put, popped it on Velcro, so I've given myself that flexibility. But if you had rigidly mounted that on this side, for example, you can't get access, can you? So you can have to mount it over here on the right hand side so that you can access that port the the mic i've put a dead cat on that because i'm going to pop it up inside my lid and try some vlogging next i've got to try and mount this inside the lid somewhere can you see that just a temporary thing just to i just want to try and see what this audio is like let's connect to k5 on wi-fi is actually much quicker than the old system that's done. Can I connect via the Inov K2 app? Let's have a look. 
No. So you can't connect via the Inov K2 app, you have to use the Inov app. So let's have a look. Yeah, that is much, much quicker than it was before. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, so on 5.8G, you can alter the Wi-Fi from 2.4 to the faster 5.8 if you have any issues. So you can change how long the Wi-Fi stays active for. Resolution, you can change the resolution. The maximum on the front can be as 4K at 30 frames per second. It will do 2K at 60. The rear the maximum it will do is 1080 at 30, but it'll do 720 at 60 if you wanted that. I am happy, 4K at 30 and the rear 1080 at 30, Bosch. Bit rates, uh, again you can alter all that, I'm going to have it on the highest quality possible because I want the best quality possible for this. Here's your mirror imaging, if for example say that's the top of the camera but you have to mount it that way then you can flip the uh, footage. Loop recording, got it set on one minute intervals, you can switch that off completely or you can have it up to a maximum of 10 minute intervals, so I'm going to stick with one minute. Video format TS, I'm going to put that onto MP4. Time lapse video, I don't want that. Video compression 265, yeah, that'll do me. I want the volume down a little bit. Let's do 60. So I'll turn the volume down a little bit. I've got a date and time in there. Speed, I want MPH. You can't have it at kilometers per hour. Speed and longitude. All right, okay, so you can turn off your GPS data and your speed data if you want. I'm going to leave it on uh, all. You can have your speed showing, you can have just the coordinates showing, but I'm going to have it on the everything you can change your gps various different frequencies there parking mode i'm going to put the parking mode on g sensor is basically it's like your bump sensor so how much of a bump does the bike need to feel before it either activates the parking mode like starts recording when you're stopped or alternatively if it detects something that it thinks you might want to see then it will lock that and put it into like a saved folder uh what else we've got here oh there's loads of stuff absolutely loads of stuff at the moment if you look at the remote, you can see the green light for recording is constant and the Wi-Fi, the blue Wi-Fi on the right, that's constant so that tells us that the Wi-Fi is connected and the camera is recording. The GPS is blinking because it's got no GPS uh, signal yet because we're inside. As soon as we go outside, that will change. Right, oh, so we'll whack that in there. Connect that up. Wash. So you can see folks, it is a really grotty day, it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it's 1st of Feb, lots of crap and crud on the road here, see how those lenses are coping. Now the GoPro is set at 2.7k, how does that compare to the Inov? Slow down, so 40. And what is the sound like? This is the sound with the GoPro. Hi, I'm just doing a review of the new Inov 4K motorcycle dash cam. What do you think? And this is the sound with the K5 onboard audio via the external mic. Hi, I'm just doing a review of the new Inov 4K motorcycle dash cam with integrated external audio. What do you think? How does it sound? Now, something I do like is with this remote, I can have a look there and I can see everything is working fine. All the lights are solidly lit, so that tells me it's recording, it's got a GPS link, and it's got the Wi Fi established as well. Nationals! Uh, you get a lot of grit at the bottom of this hill and mud. Hey, of course, slidey on that road. So, how does it cope in these sort of darker situations with the light levels fluctuating as we're coming through the trees? Now, it's set on the highest bit rate, so the quality should be good. Does it compare with the GoPro? What do you think? So what's it like over all the bumps? What's the stabilisation like in the camera? 
going over some potholes and things there what's the vibration like do I need to revisit how I mount the front camera or is that gonna suffice let's get ourselves into the city into the city eh? let's get ourselves into the bustling metropolis of inner Maidstone stand by okay so this will be a dual carriageway speeds so those not from the UK will whack this up to 70 mile an hour all right so how's the audio and uh, what's the camera like what's the picture quality like at motorway speeds sound like oh old bell back there as well hello I've got to admit it's it's a nice reassuring feeling that everything is being recorded I do like that it's a contentious issue because everything is being recorded so, but for me like my days of being a total hooligan are, are, are done certainly on the road anyway like around here there's just no point maybe when I'm abroad up in the Spanish mountains I'll have a bit of fun but here I'm just sort of like it's it's not this is my livelihood now so I don't want to risk it ah on the remote itself That'll signify and tell you whether everything's working okay, which all seems to be at the moment. Now there's another function that you can do, which is, say I've just seen something, and I thought, oh, I need that. If you push the button once, I think I pushed that button, I can't feel on my fingers. <laughs> Let's try that again. If you see something and you think, oh, I need that, well, if you push, there we go, so that blinked. I pushed it once and then the green movie camera that blinked so that should save that section of film and then there's another function where if you push twice that should then take a picture now one thing I want to check is the GPS tracking now I want to have a look at uh, the file so camera files so there's nothing recorded in accident videos, what about in continuous? So there we go, here's all our continuous ones. Uh, here, play online. So, this is a 4K video clip. And already, look how much quicker that is. The old one would be at about 3% by now. And that was just at 1080. This is 4K resolution that it's downloading. That is a lot quicker. Good job, enough. Good job. Boom. So that's successfully saved to mobile album. Does that mean if I now go local files? And there it is. And there is my GPS. Beautiful. So where's your speed information? It's down here. Ah, so there's all your speed. It's quite hard to see. Now obviously on my image I can see the front cowling of the bike there. And that actually makes this read out here quite hard to see. It's very small down in the bottom left. That is your date, your time, your speed, all that sort of information. You'd be able to see it okay on a bigger screen. And the GPS readout is lovely. Let's go back into settings, because before you could only have your GPS uh, information overlaid if you're an MP4 format, format. Yeah, so I have that on MP4. Let me change that to TS. So that's changed to TS. I'm going to have to switch off the system. We have to restart the system, so I'm going to have to switch off, wait a couple of minutes for everything to shut down, and then restart. So when I get home, we'll check and have a look at the um, GPS, see how that works. But well, so far, I'm impressed with that. So folks, the answer to that is yes. If you record in TS format, now you can also have your GPS data overlaid. On the K2, you could only do that if it was MP4. With the K5, TS also works. So, the Inov K5 4K motorcycle dash cam system. What do I think? Yes, the front camera is quite bulky now. I've chatted with Inov about that. Apparently it's due to the limitations of trying to get 4K resolution, 4K information down a cable to a separate DVR module for the price bracket that they're looking at, that's just not possible. That's why everything's integrated into that one camera at the front. The tiny little screw issue for 
the wee hatch where the SD card is. Again, I raised that with Inov and they've already addressed it. They've taken those screws away and all the new units will have thumb screws on them, just like on the C5 and K2 systems. The little thumb screws which attached all the cables. Sound. What did you think about the onboard mic for the K5? I was quite impressed, to be honest. It's actually It actually sounded a little bit crisper than the GoPro mic that I use. My GoPro sounded a little bit muffled in comparison. However, the K5 was quite tinny, quite treble heavy. I could fix that, I think, in post with a little bit of magic, but the footage that you see in this vid, there's no post color correction, there's no audio correction, that's as they came out the cameras, cameras, both for the GoPro and for the K5. On the subject of the mic, I also tried taking the mic and popping that under the seat, right near where the DVR module is. I just ran it down the sort of cowling on the side of the tank, following where all the other cables are, You'll see that in the installation vid coming very soon. And this is what I got. So what did you think of that as sound? Again, I'm quite impressed with that. It's actually very loud. I could probably turn the mic volume down in the app. I've got it set at 60. I could probably reduce that down to about 20 or 40, I would think. But otherwise, the quality is really good. What did you think of the vid quality at night? I think when you have a look at it and you compare them side by side with the GoPro, it's not bad at all. The front lens with the K5 definitely seems to suffer from uh, weather conditions, so if there's moisture in the air, that lens seems to get dirtier quicker than the GoPro does, but I think with the GoPro, I'm moving my head around a lot, so that's getting multiple angles of, of wind that helps to keep that fairly clear, whereas the, the K5 is, is just mounted static at the front. Even if you put that behind a screen, the screen is still going to get dirty or wet. All in. I'm really impressed. The improved Wi-Fi is fantastic. The speed now between the system and your app, it's like rocket ship fast compared to the K2. Downloading files, I would say it's anywhere from five to 10 times quicker than the K2 was. The GPS seems to work all the time with the old system, with the K2. I seem to have a few flat spots around about this area when I was out riding. Everything I've done so far, exact same routes with the K5, the GPS has never let me down. Price-wise, it starts at £400 with no SD card and it goes up to just under 450 with a 256 gig card. Don't forget the K5 is the flagship 4K model. In of have given me the go ahead to say this, there is actually a new K3 system coming out, which is basically going to be the fall between between the K2 and the K5. It's going to be a 1080 resolution camera system. However, it's going to have the improved Wi-Fi, the improved GPS and the external mic. But the DVR module will be like the K2 system separate from the cameras. If you're interested in that, hang on a while because that will be coming out imminently. This K5 is the flagship. If you want 4K, that's the system for you. Okay then folks, there is an installation vid coming very soon. Keep your eye out for that. A massive thanks to Inoff for the loan of the K5 system and their continued support on the channel. Folks, I shall leave a link in the vid description down below if you want to pop along over to the Inov website and pick yourself up one of their products. Okay, folks, that'll do us for this week. Keep on doing your thing. Look after those that you love. Stay safe. But most importantly, get on out there when you can and live your life. woo -ha! Can't believe I need another pee. Hi, how are you doing? I'm just doing a little review of the new Kinov Kinov of the new Inov 5K. I'll start that again. Really, really need a pee.